Nama Om Vishnu Vadaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Goravani Pracharne Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pastyatyade Shatarne Shri Krishna Chaitanya Pramanityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shivas Adi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Vanchakalpa Trulubhyas Cha Kripa Sindhu Bhya Evacha Paditanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Yes, so very good devotees. Hare Krishna to all of you. And again, thank you for coming. And as always, we sincerely appreciate your participation. Thank you very much. Okay, so we um, we're, we are in the 17th chapter. We've been discussing different things in the modes, food in the modes. <laughs> Generally, that's interesting for everyone. I find it interesting also. <laughs> and then there was uh, austerities of the body, words, and mind uh, in, in the modes. And I, that's also very interesting. Now this evening we're going into uh, the fifth section, which is charity in the modes. And it's from verse 20 to 22, verses 21, 20, uh, 20, 21, and 22. So let's just read through the uh, translations. Verse 20, charity given out of duty without expectation of return at the proper time and place and to a worthy person is considered to be in the mode of goodness. And then verse 21, but charity performed with the expectation of some return, or with the desire for fruit of results, or, or in a grudging mood, is said to be charity in the mode of passion. <laughs> oh, Krishna. Yes. And 22. And charity performed at an impure place, at an improper time, to, a, to unworthy persons or without proper attention and respect is said to be in the mode of ignorance. Yes. <clears throat> and, you know, I just can't help but think of, of when we're in India or here in India, and the people come, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so much in passion and ignorance. It's just a shame, just a terrible shame. They've just lost track of, uh, of what is proper behavior. Anyway, okay, let's go through here. Verse 20, charity given out of duty without expectation of return at the proper time and place and to a worthy person is considered to be in the mode of goodness. So, yes, so that's nice because charity, charity is important. Charity is very important. Um, here, Prabhupada begins the purport by saying how, well, in effect, really, what Prabhupada is saying 
is that ideally we should give charity to, to uh, devotees. Charity given to a person engaged in spiritual activities is recommended. Uh, in the purport, uh, Prabhupada seems to be a little more flexible, qualified Brahmin or a Vaishnav or in temples, you know, it depends if you can find a, a really qualified Brahmin, actually, and, and also what type of Vaishnav, and certainly it depends what sort of temple. You know, there, there can be a, a whole lot of flexibility there. So really speaking, best to give charity to uh, the followers of Srila Prabhupada, or, or rather, say first of all, to the institution of Srila Prabhupada and the projects and programs which are officially there in the institution of Srila Prabhupada. Because to find, you know, a truly worthy temple where they're not going to take substantial amounts of the money uh, and just put it in their own pockets. Believe me, that's not easy. That's difficult. Yeah, and qualified Brahmin, oh gosh. Again, really a qualified Brahmin means a Vaishnav. And, and what sort of Vaishnav? Really speaking, uh, we're talking about the, the Vaishnavs who are followers of Srila Prabhupada, actually. Uh, yeah, and, and Prabhupada makes the point. There's no recommendation for giving charity indiscriminately. Just, you know, sort of throwing money around. Like, like everything in life. It should be done carefully, in the right ways, properly, like that. Yeah. Uh, yes, and of course, uh, and in terms of place, in a place of pilgrimage, like one of Prabhupada's temples also. <laughs> uh, and at a, an eclipse, possibly, Prabhupada mentions, uh, or, you know, on some holy day, some special day, we just celebrated Prabhupada's disappearance day, Govardhan Puja. These are excellent days for giving some charity. Uh, and Prabhupada makes, it's just a really important point. At the end of the uh, purport, charity to the poor is sometimes given out of compassion. But if a poor man is not worth giving charity to, then there's no spiritual advancement. You know, I don't know how much in, maybe not so much in, in, uh, in India, but here in South Africa, there are people trying to get money, uh, but so many of them, they'll just spend it on just some intoxication, and you will have sponsored the intoxication if they use the, the money you gave them in charity. And if you sponsor something, you share the results. So, yeah, it's not... It's not just a simple thing, just just some poor person, you know, some poor person. Give them some, give them some prasadam. And if they refuse prasadam and they want money, you know, they're not hungry people. They're looking for some, some other thing, maybe some intoxication, something like that. Verse 21, but charity performed with the expectation of some return or with a desire for fruit of results or in a grudging mood 
is said to be charity in the mode of passion. Yes, so in the purport, Srila Prabhupada is talking about those who want uh, some elevation to a heavenly planet, perhaps, or, or sometimes at the end they regret, why have I spent so much in this way? Krishna. You know, in in the Bhagavatam, if I remember correctly, it's the first canto, but it's definitely in the Bhagavatam in one purport. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada talks about different types of charity uh, and different types of results from those different types of charities. And he talks about just what we mentioned giving charity to some poor person, but then they, they use the money on some intoxication or some buying some meat maybe or something along those lines. So the result there is that it will be bad for you. You'll get no benefit. What to speak of benefit, you'll actually go down. You'll get sinful reactions for sponsoring sinful activity. Then Prabhupada talks about if you give charity to like a respectable, genuine, material charity where they're actually helping people on the material level, then Srila Prabhupada says in that type of situation, uh, you may get the equal amount back in the future. But if you give to a qualified Brahmin, you can get 10 times back in the future. And if you give to a, a pure devotee or like Srila Prabhupada or Prabhupada's movement, you can get an unlimited number of times back in the future. Yeah, so it's, it's scientific, actually. It's scientific. Uh, and even in the purport here, Prabhupada uh, doesn't really recommend giving to charitable foundations which are sponsoring sense gratification. Yeah, I mean, it really, it's just best to stick to, to Srila Prabhupada and his movement, his temples. And, and his projects and like that. And, uh, and, and the devotees, I mean, depending, not just any devotees, but like, like uh, the senior devotees who are tra traveling and doing preaching, at least, at least when they were traveling and preaching. Ha, huh, okay, so verse 22. And charity performed at an impure place, at an improper time, to unworthy persons, or without proper attention and respect, is said to be in the mode of ignorance. Hmm. Well, actually, Prabhupada here talks about giving money to drunkards and people like that. It's not, it's not, it's certainly not in the mode of passion, it's it's in the mode of ignorance, yes. Uh, and sinful activity is encouraged and promoted and the, the donor has to take uh, or share at least some of the, rea the reaction. So yeah, Prabhupada doesn't really go into it much. Uh, Uh, Prabhupada makes an interesting point. Similarly, if a person gives charity to a suitable person, but without respect and without, without attention, <clears throat> that sort of charity is also said to be in the mode of darkness. Srila Baladeva Vijabhushan makes an interesting point. Listen to this. 
even if time and place are proper, if charity is given with lack of proper respect to the recipient, such as not washing the feet, hmm, and with disregard in the form of using low forms of address in speaking to the person, this is charity in the mode of ignorance. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, Vaishya Sika Prabhu, great book distributor and leader of book distribution in Srila Prabhupada's movement, he was telling us last year, I think maybe in the Mayapur meetings 2019, uh, he was telling us how he went, he took a group of devotees, international devotees, to Jagannath Puri just before the GBC meetings in, in the earlier part of 2019. And they had they got some books, they got some books sponsored. And so they were distributing those books like inexpensively to, to the pilgrims, who are usually very simple folks. Uh, sort of village people in many cases. And so they were distributing them quite cheaply. And so he said that they would walk up to the, to the people as usual and hand a book to them. And of course, they didn't know the language, the devotees. And when as soon as the people saw that this is a sacred book, picture of Krishna, Prabhupada, you know, something of that sort. The people immediately took off their shoes in the street. They took off their shoes, and in, in practically all cases, they gave some donation, small donation, but because the books had been sponsored, the devotees would just accept and carry on. But yeah, you see, very nice to be the recipient of charity. It has to be done very nicely. Yeah, and to, to give and to receive. It's actually, it's, it's a sacred exchange, an important sacred exchange. Right, so, just a mo. Okay, so now, the last, what is it, six verses. Uh, verse 23 to verse 28. And we've titled this, this the conclusion, Om Tat Sat. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so the idea here is that all of these activities mentioned should be done for the supreme absolute truth, uh, who, who can be sort of recognized or addressed or indicated by, Srila Prabhupada actually uses this term indicated by, uh, indicated via the terms Om Tat Sat. Yeah. So these are sacred terms. We will, there's a description of what they mean, uh, and we'll discuss that. Uh, and if, if not, if, if these activities are not done with a connection, with some sort of connection, with the absolute truth, then they're contaminated by the modes. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is specifically mentioned as Om Tat Sat. Uh, although, you know, it's clear that Om Tat Sat is indirect. It is not exactly equal to Hare Krishna, if you say Om Tat Sat. It's relevant. It's connected. But Hare Krishna is, is more complete and is better, really. 
and certainly is more direct. It's kind of like it's related to, I mean, to some degree at least you could say, the idea of the yoga lad ladder. You start with Karmakandiya and then you come up to something else. Uh, then, you, you know, you karma yoga and then ashtanga yoga, maybe jnana yoga, and then you come to devotional service. So this is an older concept like a traditional, a traditional Vedic concept from the past, whereas now, particularly now, uh, we're in the time of Lord Chaitanya, and uh, Srila Prabhupada, the, the example is given, Srila Prabhupada gave the example of trying to get to a, a very, the top of a very tall building. You can either go up the stairs or you can take the lift. Lord Chaitanya's method is the lift. <laughs> the yoga ladder and from one stage to another to another and it takes a lot of time and like that, that's like walking up the stairs. So our, the context for us is the movement of Lord Chaitanya. So here, even though Om Tat Sat is being sort of, you could say, promoted, certainly mentioned by Lord Krishna himself, we should not, I mean, not that you can't say Om Tat Sat at all, but it's not like now we should adopt saying Om Tat Sat, Om Tat Sat, Om Tat Sat as a regular daily function. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely not like that. Okay, so anyway, <clears throat> let's get into it. Uh, yeah, so we, we're starting with verse 23, and there are no subsections, so I'll just read all the verses right through to verse 28. Verse 23, from the beginning of creation, the three words Om Tat Sat were used to indicate the supreme absolute truth. These three symbolic representations we used by Brahmins while chanting the hymns of the Vedas and during sacrifices for the satisfaction of the Supreme. Okay. <clears throat> Verse 24. Therefore, transcendentalists under undertaking performances of sacrifice, charity, and penance in accordance with scriptural regulations, begin always with Om to attain the Supreme. 25. Without desiring fruit of results, one should perform various kinds of sacrifice, penance and charity. With the word Tat, the purpose of such transcendental activities is to get free from material entanglement. 26 and 27, together. The absolute truth is the objective of devotional sacrifice, and it is indicated by the word sat. The performer of such sacrifice is also called sat, as are all works of sacrifice penance, and charity, which, true to the absolute nature, are performed to please the Supreme Person, O Son of Prita. And verse 28, which is the end of the chapter. Anything done as sacrifice, charity, or penance without faith in the Supreme O son of Prita, is impermanent. It is called asat and is useless both in this life and the next. Hare Krishna. 
That's pretty strong, isn't it? Okay. So back to verse 23. Let's read it again and make some comments based on the purport. From the beginning of creation, the three words Om Tat Sat were used to indicate the supreme absolute truth. These three symbolic representations were used by Brahmins while chanting the hymns of the Vedas and during sacrifices for the satisfaction of the Supreme. All right, yes. Uh, well, as, as Prabhupada has used the term indicate, they indicate the Supreme Absolute Truth. Hare Krishna, we, we, don't, we don't talk about it in those terms of it indicating. We talk of Hare Krishna as being the Supreme Lord. He is present. We're associating with him in the form of his holy name. Uh, so it's, it's a different conception, but it definitely has transcendental value, put it that way. But like we said, not quite like Hare Krishna. So, uh, Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur makes a comment. He says that these, Om Tat Sat, that these words were, were revealed long ago by the ancient sages, and from them were created the Brahmins, the Vedas, and sacrifice. How's that? Om Tat Sat, in the beginning. From those words were created the Brahmins, the Vedas, and sacrifice. Among those words, Om is well known in all the Shrutis as the name of Brahman. The word Tat is well known to designate the cause of the universe and is also known to signify the obliterator of what is not Tat. <laughs> In other words, the material world. Yeah. Sat is defined in the Shrutis as that which exists before everything else, the eternal. So let me just say a little a word there just so we get at least the basic idea. What are we talking about? Om uh, is, you, is a term used to signify the absolute truth. More often than not, not or at least often, uh, as Brahman not necessarily the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It could be, but more often it's used to signify Brahman, Om. Then Tat, literally Tat, means that. You know, that what? <laughs> there are many that's, but what that are we talking about? So he says, it's that which is the cause of the universe, uh, and that which obliterates, which destroys anything which is material, which is not directly of his spiritual nature. And then sat, of course, sat generally means eternity or eternal, that which is eternal. So... Uh, yeah, and this is also signifying the absolute truth, that which existed before everything else, before there was a creation, the spiritual realm, uh, which is under the Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, was existing. Yeah, okay, so anyway, in the first paragraph, Srila Prabhupada explains that uh, that when all these different things we're just, we were reading about last night, I mean, 
the austerities, penances, and charities, and all these things. It has been explained that penance, sacrifice, charity, and foods are divided into three categories in terms of the mode. Um, but the thing is, if they're not offered to the Supreme, this is the point Prabhupada's making, then, uh, then they're, they're contaminated by the modes of nature, of course. But when they're aimed at the Supreme, uh, om tat sat, when some transcend, you, you could say, we can say, when some transcendental mantras are chanted and there's transcendental consciousness and transcendental goals involved, when they're aimed at the Supreme, Prabhupada says, then, uh, then they become means for spiritual elevation, of course. Yes, um, particularly, and most particularly, when they're aimed at or offered to the actual Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. It's one thing, Brahman or something, which is not, you know, very distinct. But, but when, when, it, when everything is aimed at, to use the language Prabhupada's using, aimed at Krishna, then it's very wonderful and transcendental. Right, uh, yeah. So now here, in the purport in the second paragraph, Srila Prabhupada, um, well, he explains a few things that, first of all, any, any activities which are done without following the rules of Shastra, well, or anyone who acts like that, sorry, they're not going to achieve the absolute truth. They're not going to go back to Godhead or anything even vaguely related to or connected to going back to Godhead. Maybe some temporary result, uh, which is okay for the time being, but not nothing long-term or nothing eternal, particularly. So, so therefore, first of all, Prabhupada's recommending that these different things, charity, sacrifice, penance, at least do them in the mode of goodness, at least. Um, but, but try to, you know, for people who are not devotees, you could say, try to chant Om Tat Sat, Om Tat Sat. And Srila Prabhupada does give an explanation here of Am Tat Sat. Right, so let's just read through here. The three, the three words Am Tat Sat are uttered in, in conjunction with the holy name of the Supreme Lord. For example, Om Tad Vishnu. Whenever a Vedic hymn or the holy name of the Supreme Lord is uttered, Om is added. This is the indication of Vedic literature. Well, you know, we don't always do that, do we? But according to the instructions of the four Vedas, Rigsama Yajra and Atarva, this is how it's done. You say Om first, and then Hare Krishna or whatever name of the Lord. <clears throat> but we are not exactly following the four Vedas, the Shruti. Of, of the Vedic literatures, we're following the Smriti, and even ultimately we're following Lord Chaitanya. So, yeah. But anyway, in a historical sense, this is how things were done or recommended to be done. Mm -hmm. So these three words are taken from Vedic literature. And now Prabhupada quotes from the four Vedas. First of all, Rig Veda, then Chandogya Upanishad, which is connected with 
one of the four Vedas. Upanishads are explanatory literatures connected with the four Vedas. Okay, so, uh, Om, Om is addressed in this first mantra from the Rig Veda. Om ityetad brahmano nedishtam nama. Prabhupada says, indicates the first goal. You know, yeah. So what, what does that mean, actually, the first goal? Um, well, you know, what this means is, Om is mentioned, of course, so that's, there are three words, Om, Tat, Sat. So Om is the, here. So this is talking about Om. And what it really means is that, well, it's, it's indi indicating Brahman. Om Ityetad Brahmano Nedishtam Nama. Nedishtam means uh, Nedishtam means close to, situated. So Om is situated by name close to Brahman or the Absolute Truth. That's the idea there. Then Tat, Tattvamasi, indicates the second goal. So this, the first goal was Om, which indicates Brahman. Yeah, and brings us close to Brahman. Now, the second term, of course, is Tat, Om Tat Sat. So Tat, then Tat Tvamasi, indicates the second goal. This Tat Tvamasi, what it means is, you are that. Asi means you are. You are that. And what's that? That's that Brahman, that absolute truth, the transcendental nature. Yeah. So it's indicating uh, in a second sense, it's a little different from Om. Uh, and it's it's indicating that we are, we are that, or we are the same as that, like that. Then, sad, sat, sad eva somya, indicates the, uh, the third goal, which is sat, eternity, eternity. Uh, yeah. So, okay, anyway, that's interesting. That is interesting. That's from Prabhupada himself. And Prabhupada makes the point, just after that little description there, combined they become Om Tat Sat, and Prabhupada states, Formerly, when Brahma, the first created living entity, performed sacrifices, he indicated by these three words the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, the same, the same principle has always been followed by disciplic succession. So therefore, Om Tat Sat, you know, it's got a whole history. It's, it's got a whole history behind it, a whole deep significance behind it. Uh -huh. and, and therefore Bhagavad Gita is recommending. And we can use it sometimes. You may have noticed if you spent a little time in the association of Jai Pataka Maharaj, sometimes he says, Om Tat Sat, when he's beginning a class, <laughs> when he's going to say something, and on some other occasions. He's, he includes, along with various other things, some Om Tat Sat. Uh, but, it's, but we are following Lord Chaitanya, so it's not like Om Tat Sat is our thing and we're really deeply into it. That's not the case. 
we are deeply into Hare Krishna. <laughs> Very deeply into Hare Krishna. Yeah, and, and some, you know, some other Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, etc., other, some other mantras which are very intimately connected with Hare Krishna. Aha. So, yeah. So, Prabhupada concludes the purport. Krishna consciousness is a scientific execution of transcendental activities, which enables one to return home back to Godhead. There's no loss of energy in acting such in such a transcendental way. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. So, you know, the principle, if we go to the, you know, like the real, the sense of principle, the principle is all these things, sacrifice, charity, penance, austerity, food, activities, your life, whatever, anything, it must be connected with Krishna. Must be connected. If not connected with Krishna, you're in the modes, and you know what that means. You are in Maya, and you will not be going out of this material world. So that's the principle on the most sort of foundational level uh, in terms of this explanation here. Okay, let's carry on. <clears throat> There's not so much to say about the next couple of verses, a little bit. 24. Therefore, transcendentalists undertake, un undertaking performances of sacrifice, charity and penance in accordance with scriptural regulations, begin always with Aum to attain the Supreme. You know, we do also. I mean, sometimes. We, when we begin our Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam classes, then we chant Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. It is a Shruti mantra. It begins with Aum as an indication of the absolute truth. But then, Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya is a statement which doesn't need Aum. <laughs> if you just say, Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, you said something very nice in Krishna consciousness. But as Vedic tra tradition sort of, you know, dictates, promotes, recommends, or whatever, it's it's done in the old Vedic tradition. Om is there because it's coming from that old tradition. But, but when we chant Hare Krishna, you know, it's, it's very rare that we chant Om before or Sri Krishna Chaitanya or these other mantras. Uh, okay, okay. So anyway, just let's have a little look at the little purport. Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's the tradition that the people are following the process in, in that context means the old Vedic Shruti context from before Lord Chaitanya's time or, or even possibly before Kali, Kali Yuga, actually, but, but in the past, they would always do this. They would always do this. Uh, and, you know, in principle, the principle is basically one of, you know, that we must chant the holy names. When we do things, we must chant the holy names. 25, without desiring fruitive results, one should perform various kinds of sacrifice, penance, and chari charity with the word tat. The purpose of such transcendental activities is to get free from material entanglement um, because 
in the sense that when, when you are doing that, or, or starting that, or just doing that, if you say, uh, if you say tat, consciously, in, in the con- with, with the consciousness of what it really means, uh, then you are connecting it with that Krishna, the Supreme Absolute Truth, who's the creator of the universe, that, that we said in regard to, uh, you know, the little explanation there in the second paragraph of, of verse 23. Uh, yeah, so tat, tat then is that uh, for whom or for what the activities are being done for. Yes, that's the purpose. Now here, devotees, we have a special question for those of you doing Bhakti Shastri based on this verse 25 that we, we just went through. Uh, and it is, we're, we're going to read something. It's from a letter to devotees Pro, uh, from San Francisco. And this is the important thing. If you want to look it up to get the right information to answer the question, Uh, The letter was written on March 30th, 1967. So you can look it up on on the computer if you've got Prabhupada's books on computer. March 30th, 1967. So Srila Prabhupada says, If you chant always Hare Krishna, read my books and preach this philosophy sincerely, then Krishna will provide you with all facility and you will not fall down into material entanglement. Okay. So you're meant now, the question is to refer to a letter of Prabhupada's about material entanglement. And Prabhupada said that if you do three things, Krishna will give you all facility and you will not fall into material active, uh, entanglement. Three things. So we read them. What were they? You must always chant Hare Krishna, read Prabhupada's books, and preach this philosophy sincerely. So there you go. All right, so we're on to verses 26 and 27. The absolute truth is the objective of devotional sacrifice, and it, and it is indicated by the word sat. The performer of such sacrifice is also called sat, as are all works of sacrifice, penance and charity. They're all sat, which, true to the absolute nature, are performed to please the supreme person, O son of Prita. Yes, okay, well, all right, so Srila Prabhupada begins the purport by uh, referring to that, how there's so many prescribed activities in Vedic literature, basically referring to the samskaras, basically referring to the samskaras, which are there in the material Varnashram system, or spiritual Varnashram system also. I mean, samskaras can be very spiritual, uh, and which are there for, the, for liberation, so when you do such things, you should chant Om, Om Tat Sat, or at least traditionally they would. We chant Hare Krishna particularly. Yeah. So then Prabhupada gives a, uh, an interesting description 
of two terms which are there in the first line of the Sanskrit. Uh, let's just have a look here. Where are they? Of verse, what is it, 26. Sad bhave, sadhu bhave cha. Yes. So, yeah. What this means is that sat bhave, sad bhave indicates well, sadbhave and sadhubhave indicate the transcendental situation. Yeah, well, Prabhupada's saying that. But satbhave, satbhave is particularly <coughs> referring to, um, satbhave is referring to, if you look at the word for word, the, it's indicating <coughs> the nature, the bhava. In this context, the term bhava means nature. It's indicating the nature of the supreme, whereas, which is sat. The supreme is sat, eternal. Uh, and whereas sadhu bhava, sadhu indicates the devotee. The devotee is a sadhu. The nature, bhava again is nature the nature of the devotee. And then, but then there's a third, so that both of those are eternal. But then there's a third thing which is eternal in this context, and that is the activities which are done by the devotee in relation to the Supreme Person, to, to the Sat, the eternal Absolute truth. Yeah. I hope you follow the idea. I think it's fairly, fairly straightforward. Uh, but then there's another step further. Prabhupada takes it another step further. That, that yes, okay, the sadhus are doing the sat, eternal activities, in service to the sat eternal absolute truth lord krishna but um the the association of the sadhus Prabhupada refers to famous verse uh bhagavatam 325 25 which is emphasizing how uh one must associate with the devotees and in their association participate in, or at least hear, the discussions about Krishna consciousness. Yeah, and, and cultivate knowledge of the sat, <laughs> meaning all three, if you like, the sat, the eternal supreme absolute truth, Krishna, the, the, the sat, the sadhus, the nature of the sadhus who are just they're just on the absolute platform, and the nature of the absolute, the, the activities of service done by the devotees to the absolute, which is also eternal. Yeah. Uh, and Prabhupada says, the, the words used, these are the first two words of the verse, satam prasangat, Without good association, one cannot achieve transcendental knowledge. And without transcendental knowledge, you can't become a sadhu. You can't do transcendental activity, service to the Lord. And like this, you can't have a connection with the Lord. Yeah. So actually what we must do then is uh, offer everything. Offer everything to the Lord cooking, helping in the Lord's temple, or any other kind of work for broadcasting the glories of the Lord, even on Facebook or, or Zoom or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So these words, Prabhupada concludes the purport, these supreme, supreme words, Om Tat Sat, are thus used in many ways to perfect all activities and make everything complete. And for us, 
the supreme words Hare Krishna are used in many ways to, to uh, perfect our activities and make everything complete. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Last verse 28. Anything done as sacrifice, charity, or penance without faith in the supreme, O son of Prita, is impermanent. It is called asat, asat, and is useless both in this life and in the next. So, well, Prabhupada explains this point in the purport. He's basically just paraphrasing that without that faith, without Anything done without the transcendental objective, whether it be sacrifice, charity, or penance, or food, for that matter. How about food, too? Yes, anything. Anything. It's useless if it's done uh, without connection to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And, and with, uh, if it's without faith, without proper guidance. It's just, you've got a recipe for going nowhere except down. This is all, this is all so important. Yeah. Therefore, the best course is to work from the very beginning in Krishna consciousness under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master. That is the way to make everything successful. That's what Prabhupada says at the end of the paragraph, first paragraph. And in the second paragraph, Prabhupada is more or less summing up the whole chapter. Let's just read the, the last paragraph. It's a good one. In the conditional state, people are attracted to worshipping demigods, ghosts, or yakshas like Kuvera. The mode of goodness is better than the modes of passion and ignorance. But one who takes directly to Krishna consciousness is transcendental to all three modes of material nature. Although there is a process of gradual elevation, if one, by the association of pure devotees, takes directly to Krishna consciousness, that is the best way. And that is recommended in this chapter. To achieve success in this way, one must first find the proper spiritual master and receive training under his direction. Then one can achieve faith in the Supreme. When that faith matures in course of time, it is called love of God. How's that for an interesting statement? <laughs> That's, isn't that just amazing? What is love of God? The mature state of faith. And how does one get faith? Through the association of devotees and by serving under the supervision of a bona fide spiritual master. So Prabhupada concludes the purport. This love is the ultimate goal of the living entities. One should therefore take to Krishna consciousness directly that is the message of the 17th chapter. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports to the 17th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the nature of the divisions of faith. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Kejai.